it's Meg. So today I wanted to make a collection rules video just talking about my rules for collecting for 2021. I think the last time I made a video like this just specifically about my collection rules might have been over a year ago, maybe even in 2019. <laughs> so this was before I was collecting photo cards for NCT members or anybody. So it's been a while and my rules have definitely changed. So yeah, I just want to talk about what I plan on collecting this year, what I don't plan on collecting for this year, and then talk with all of you about your collection plans because I just want to know, you know, what albums do you want to collect? What artists do you want to collect for? Do you collect photo cards? All of that stuff. It's always fun to talk about all of that with all of you. So my main kind of plan for this year is to continue to collect for albums. I'm a predominantly album collector. I collect mostly albums. I have a pretty good sized photo card collection, but that's because I buy a lot of albums. So majority of what you see in my photo card collection for you know the recap videos or my putting my photo cards away videos those are majority just pulls i don't collect for a lot of people i collect for a few nct members i collect shiny solo releases um shiny solo korean releases but other than that i don't collect a lot of photo cards with purpose with intent most of my photo cards are just pulls because i love collecting albums it's what makes me happy i've been a collector for most of my life just random things like sailor moon trading cards sports trading cards music i have so many cds and vinyls and music just makes me the happiest so i love having a physical representation of the thing that makes me happy so i do plan on collecting for albums but for rules for collecting for albums, I would say I will try to limit the multiple versions because there's so many versions now for so many groups. So I for like my top top ultimates, I will continue to buy multiple versions. But for other groups, I may just buy one <laughs> depending on how many versions there are. Of course, what the comebacks are like, what the money situation is like. So for example, say Itzy, when Itzy came out, they had two versions. So I was good with the two versions, but then three versions started happening and three isn't that much more than two but when other groups are having three versions and then there's like five other groups making a comeback it's really hard to collect all the versions for all the groups all the time it's a lot of money <laughs> collecting is it does get pretty expensive this is basically my one hobby for myself i don't buy a lot of other things for myself buying music has always been my main way of making myself happy even if it's not a k-pop album so it is a lot of money though. So I will try to limit how many versions I buy. I don't always buy all the versions all the time. Again, it always depends on the you know, money situation, how many versions there are. Uh, for example, Twice, for a while there, I was just buying one version of Twice, but then I decided on, during Feel Special era, I was going to get all three versions, because I was just, I was just in that era, and ever since then, I've bought all three versions, and it's been really cool, and I want to continue doing that. Will I always do that? I don't know, because, again, <laughs> you can't really, you know, determine how life is going to go, and maybe it'll get to the point where I just can't do three versions anymore, uh, but I would like to continue that for them. However, However, say they did nine or ten versions in the future that definitely would not happen so my album collecting rule is buying one version for most groups and artists and then multiples for a few groups and artists um, but not too too many I won't I would say I won't say no to buying for new artists. I never say no to buying for new artists or rookie groups if I really, really love the album. Or for buying for a group that I don't collect for or don't have an album collection for if I really, really love the album. So that'll be something that I continue doing this year is if I love the music, if I love the title track, if I love the B-sides, even if I don't have an album collection for this artist or group, I would definitely buy the album. I would say one example of that would be last year, New East, when I heard Moon Dance, someone recommended me to listen to Moon Dance and I listened to it and I just fell in love. And then I listened to the album and I was like, 
oh my god, I need this album. <laughs> and I don't have a New East album collection, but I really, really love that album. So I bought it as soon as I, you know, had that light bulb go off in my head that was like, I love this album so much. And I will definitely continue doing that this year. If I fall in love with a group or artist, if I fall in love with their music or an album, I will definitely... If I can, try to buy it, even if I don't have an actual album collection for them. Um, for Japanese releases, my collection rules are pretty much the same as they've always been. I don't buy a lot of Japanese albums for the artists that I collect albums for because they're very expensive. I still need to buy Baekhyun's Japanese release. But I don't know which one I want because there's so many versions. So I'm going to wait to see some unboxings first before I pick. But I will only be getting one because, again, Japanese albums are very expensive. Unless you buy them on Macari Japan without photo card. If you're buying them brand new, a lot of the time you'll be paying between $30 to $50. Like sometimes including shipping, sometimes not, depending on if it's a, you know, a big photo book or a DVD or Blu-ray or something like that. So because they are significantly more expensive than Korean album releases, I don't plan on buying a lot of Japanese albums. However, I did buy Love Holic because I do collect for Jungwoo, so I did buy a bunch of Love Holic versions, which I'm very excited about, but I won't be doing that for a lot of groups because again buying albums brand new from Japan gets very very expensive <laughs> so that would be my collection rule for buying Japanese releases maybe for a few groups or if I'm going back in the catalog like for shiny I do want to get more shiny Japanese albums I have a few that I'm still missing so those I will get used because I don't collect the uh, photo cards for their group releases so I will get those used and it's much better <laughs> to get those used just because the prices are a lot lot nicer than if you try to get it brand new so that would be I would say for a couple of groups I would buy some Japanese albums but not all versions for most groups and not often <laughs> because they are more expensive for extra merch say for you know seasons greetings or fan club kits and stuff like that very few groups i will buy for not because i don't love <laughs> all the groups that i have albums for and that i collect for and that i listen to but because it's very expensive so seasons greetings will run you about fifty dollars and i just can't do that <laughs> For all the groups that I like, that would be way too much money. I am sticking to three. I did three this year. My final, my third and last season's greetings is Shinies. So I am sticking to my maximum three a year rule. Although I was able to buy the season's greetings card set from NCT Dreams greetings kit. So that made me really excited. Thank you, Jazzy. But I, uh, I just can't. I just can't. It's way too expensive. They're all really cute. I watch all the unboxings for all the groups and like they're adorable but I just can't spend that kind of money. <laughs> it's way way too much. Uh, again for like DVDs, merch, fan club stuff that's going to be very few groups as well because DVDs are also very expensive. So only for my ultimates and only sometimes, not all, all of the time. You know, I won't buy every DVD or every photo book. I just, it's a lot of money. <laughs> you know, if I, maybe if I collected two or three groups, it would be easier because you collect everything for a few groups. It's still expensive, but if you collect like a lot of albums, there's always albums coming out. So there's never that moment where you can just kind of take a break from buying. And because I'm an album collector and I love collecting music and I love collecting albums, there's always new comebacks and there's always you know a lot of things happening. So I have to limit how much extra stuff I buy, even for my faves. So DVDs, huge photo books, extra merch, things like that will be limited to specific items that I really, really like. Um, even with NCT, like there's sometimes where I'll really want to buy something and I'll look at it and I'll think about it and I'll add it to cart and I'll do the shipping. And when I see what the shipping is, I just exit the whole website <laughs> because even though it's cute, I have to remind myself 
I don't want to spend that much money on one specific thing necessarily and I guess overall that's my main big collection rule is not spending more than I feel comfortable with. That goes for photo cards like this, although I was able to get a bunch of these for a really good price. So for photo cards, depending on who you collect, it's kind of easier depending on the group, how long the card has been out, you know, where you buy the card from. Mercari Japan is a great resource. Uh, for a group like NCT, their prices are just, whoo, <laughs> they are up there right now. But for photo cards, sometimes it's, it's, it's easier to find the cards I need for the price that I'm willing to pay for. But my main collection rule is to not spend more than I feel comfortable with. And for albums, for photo cards, DVDs, extra stuff, I don't, I don't want to spend money and then feel bad about the money that I spent. And I just, I want to look at the album when it comes or look at the DVD and feel really happy. I don't want to feel like I spent too much and always think about how much I spent. And I do that sometimes <laughs> when I buy a really big ticket item. I don't do that very often, but when I buy something really expensive, I feel that sense of, oh my goodness, I just spent all this money. <laughs> I think in part that's why I haven't bought a PlayStation 5, not only because I can't find one, <laughs> because it's, it's, it's just, there's a fight for these consoles, but the idea of spending that much money at one go on one thing just it makes me so nervous. <laughs> so I think that feeling carries over in my collecting to where I don't want to spend too much on one thing and I don't want to spend more than I feel comfortable spending. So that's my main rule for this year is to, when I'm buying something, ask myself, not even do I really want it because I don't really buy stuff that I don't want, but to ask myself, Am I comfortable at this price? And there have been times where I've added multiple albums to cart and then I see the full price and I just have to take some albums out. And it's not because I don't want the albums, but at that point, you know, am I willing to spend $100? Am I willing to spend $50 on this? Am I willing to spend this shipping? Especially now when a lot of the affordable shipping options are just not there. And you have to choose, you know, FedEx or DHL. EMS isn't working to a lot of countries still. K Packet isn't working to a lot of places still. So when the shipping is expensive, and and that makes everything <laughs> a lot harder. But I'm going to continue to try to only spend what I'm comfortable spending. If I see something and I really like it. I will think about it <laughs> if it's a high number to me and for example out of out of print stuff I always look for my out of print albums always even though I don't have any hope of finding them for a good price I always look because I always wonder will there be a day where someone is just you know selling their whole collection and they're willing to sell at whatever price they they sell at to make their collection you know smaller or to just sell off parts of their collection and not that I'm saying I dream of getting EXID's hippity hop at $30 I do <laughs> I dream of it I don't think it's possible but I do have that dream but I don't think it's possible, I don't think it's probable, but I, I still look. Now one of my collection rules tied into the not feeling, not you know spending more than I feel comfortable with is the same for buying something that's out of print because I know those things are going to be more expensive. You're not going to find EXID's Hippity Hop for $15 <laughs> unless someone's feeling really, really generous. But even though I really want it, and there are some Kana albums that I've seen that I really, really want that I don't have, and it would be so easy to buy them, <laughs> because then I would just be done, and I would have a complete collection. I just can't justify spending the amount of money that these albums cost on the resale market. So, yeah, that's my, that's my kind of thing that ties into that rule, is not worrying too much about buying out-of-print albums, Although I still look for them and I still hope they'll get reprinted. K-Town for You is doing a lot of asking about, you know, do we want Reve Festival? Do we want old NCT albums? Do we want old FX albums? So here's hoping that the reprint album wave continues with other groups, but there are just some albums I don't see getting reprinted at all. So my rule is I can look, but if the price is too high, I cannot buy. <laughs> um, that's my that's my rule. Just a lot of window shopping. And 
I guess just to finalize it and to tie it all in, um, with photo cards, again, my rule is to just maintain my collections. I don't foresee myself starting you know, a lot of new collections because I do try to collect thoroughly for Jungwoo and that means that a bulk of my photo card money goes towards him for buying his cards, which stuff that comes with cards and things like that. So I can't really collect for a lot of groups because I want to have a really thorough collection for him and collecting him makes me so happy and I'm really really proud of my collection so I don't foresee myself you know, starting a bunch of new collections but I do want to maybe collect some cards from the new shiny album we'll see <laughs> we'll see how that goes uh, we'll see if I actually manage to get that done um, but not even just a rule, but my last kind of collection thing for myself is realizing it's okay to have an incomplete collection. And it doesn't upset me anymore. I remember when I started collecting, I wanted to have everything. <laughs> I couldn't afford to have everything, but I wanted it. So for a lot of years, I could only get like three or four albums a year. So when I would have enough money, I'd be so excited because I'd go on Yes Asia and this is when I bought mostly on Yes Asia. I would go there and I would buy an album and I'd feel so happy. Um, and then I was finally able to collect and collect and collect. And when I was finally able to put some money towards my collection, I just started buying and buying. And that feeling of having a complete collection was my main thought. You know, I want to have all these albums. I want to have all, all of this stuff that I wasn't able to get. And... It's okay to not have a complete collection. Your, your collection is still great and it's still wonderful and it still can make you happy even if it's not 100% complete, even if you don't have everything, everything, everything. Um, my EXID collection, it's one of my favorites because EXID is one of my favorite girl groups. Their music just makes me so happy. Finding their albums, especially the out of print ones, was so exciting for me. I am still missing Hippity Hop, but I, I don't look at that collection and think this collection is incomplete because I don't have Hippity Hop, you know? Like, I don't feel sad about it anymore. I did once I collected all of the other albums. Once I finally had the other albums, I was kind of sad because I was thinking, I'll never have this album, so I'll never be complete. And that's just a collector mindset for me. Even in collecting other things, I want it. I'm a completionist at heart. Well, having everything it was my goal but I realized it's okay it's okay to not have everything and it's in some instances it's just not realistic you know financially unless I don't know I get a four thousand dollar stimulus or something or I win the lottery it's just not realistic to think that I would be able to put the money towards having everything because collecting again is very expensive you know, whether it's albums or photo cards or merch it's just, there's always stuff to buy all the time. International shipping, if you're an international fan, add that on top of the cost. It's very expensive. But I've learned from the time I started collecting albums really thoroughly until now to where I'm collecting albums. I'm also collecting photo cards that it's okay if I don't have everything. That my collection is still great and it still makes me happy and I'm still very content with it even if I'm missing an album or three albums or this photo card it's the joy of actually collecting that makes me excited getting the getting the new album experiencing the new album you know getting the photo cards getting the dvd watching the dvd and and i've tried not to focus so much on the end goal of 100 percent and just focused on the journey of actually getting the things that i'm able to to get so I'm really curious to see what your rules are for collecting for this year for who you collect for how many groups you collect for you know album versions photo cards are you gonna start new collections I love talking about all of that with all of you so let me know in the comments what your rules are and who you plan on collecting for for this year my 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 hope is <laughs> that I can just maintain my collections that I have and 
I'm just really excited for, for the music. I'm very excited. A lot of groups are planning stuff this year and I cannot wait because I need happiness and music is my happiness. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you're staying healthy and safe. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I will see you next time. Bye!